sometimes you just can't help getting angry when people that don't know you or the investment you make in your work constantly sling pointed critiques your way. When you're constantly roasted in front of the entire world, the rage can come to a frothing boil, sending a message to your critics, I'll show you. After largely tamping down his emotional outbursts to negative feedback from the Twitterverse this season, Boston College's head football coach Steve Adazio had a noteworthy slip-up Saturday night, following a disappointing 23-10 home defeat for BC, 2-4, 0-3 Atlantic Coast, at the hands of No. 16 Virginia Tech, 5-1, 1-1. When asked about whether his offense could move past its mistakes and get to a level where they could consistently execute, Adazio's tone quickly changed. It'll come together, and it'll be beautiful, he said. I don't have the time clock on it right here, but it'll come together, and it'll be beautiful, all right. And the investment is worth it. Whether it came from a place of immense frustration or as a message of belief directed to his players, Adazio's defiant assertion that the offense will soon be firing on all cylinders rang a bit hollow given the broad struggles of the unit. While Anthony Brown's confidence in the deep ball may be increasing, and while the play-action pass game nearly produced some chunk plays against the Hokies, on the whole, this is an offense that has gone from averaging 87 plays per game over the first three games to 69 plays per game over the last three games due to a deterioration in third-down efficiency. As a team that has scored more than 10 points just once in its last six conference games, dating back to last season, the Eagles certainly appear a long way off from fulfilling the promise of Adazio, at a time when the coach could really benefit from some tangible signs of progress. Adazio himself believes that a wicked combination of scheduling and injuries has greatly intensified the difficulty of such progress. There are not a ton of teams in the country that are playing at that level week in and week out right now, Adazio noted, before elaborating on the team's injury woes. We're down six or seven players right now, and we can't go down nine. Nobody in America can really recover from that. While the jury is still out on the validity of those arguments, BC will travel to face an opponent that meets Adazio's criteria on Saturday. Bobby Petrino's Louisville, 4-2, 1-2, squad has both played a difficult early schedule and suffered a devastating rash of injuries. With a humiliating 47-21 September loss to then number 3 Clemson, 6-0, 4-0, in Death Valley and a painful 39-25 loss at then number 24 North Carolina State, 5-1-3-0. Last week, the Cardinals have faced significantly more adversity than they had at this point last season. Fortunately for Petrino, he can count upon the reigning Heisman Trophy winner to carry the team through these rough waters. Lamar Jackson continues to build upon his monster 2016 campaign where he threw for 3,543 yards, ran for 1,571 yards, and totaled a whopping 51 touchdowns. This season, despite a massive reduction in both the receiving and rushing talent around him, he might actually be doing a better job handling an even more massive offensive burden in helping Louisville average 557.8 yards of total offense per game, fifth nationally. Jackson has completed 62.2% of his passes, up from 56.2 in 2016, and generally looks much more comfortable making reads and moving around in the packet, looking to throw the ball instead of tucking it down and running when his first red is covered. He's fourth in the nation with 1,990 passing yards, on pace to top his passing totals from last season by over 500 yards. On the ground, between red option plays, designed runs and scrambles, often precipitated by Louisville's weak offensive line, Jackson has totaled 91 rushing attempts, racking up 510 yards and 7 touchdowns. No other Cardinals player has run the ball more than 39 times. Decimated by injury and roster turnover, Louisville's committee of running backs has been borderline useless this season. After losing their top back from last season, Brandon Radcliffe, who had over 900 rushing yards in 2016, and seeing his returning backup, Jeremy Smith, 
succumb to a season-ending foot injury in Week 1. The Cardinals' rushing attack has been headed by senior Malik Williams and former quarterback Reggie Bonifant.